In an unexpected turn of events, NASA has shut down the Voyager 1 spacecraft after it discovered something terrifying in deep space. Was there something that suggested a new Great Bang? Let's discover. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. If you are new to the channel hit the subscription button and ring the bell so you don't miss our daily videos. This Voyager's unexpected reappearance from the past creates thrilling opportunities for future discovery and exploration. In 1977, NASA launched Voyager 1 a spacecraft designed to travel beyond the solar system. An extremely uncommon alignment of the planets in our solar system, one that occurs only once every 175 years, prompted the creation of the Voyager mission. This configuration allowed for the launch of a spacecraft that could use the gravitational pull of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune to propel itself toward the edge of our solar system. However, what caused the Voyager 1 to close down? Is there a potential for a new Great Bang? Well Voyager 1 discovered a magnetic highway at the edge of our solar system. This highway is formed when the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emanating from the sun, interacts with the interstellar medium, the substance that exists between the stars. The magnetic highway is a barrier that enables cosmic rays from outside our solar system to enter while slowing the solar wind. Another mysterious event observed by Voyager 1 was a series of cosmic tsunamis that swept across the most distant regions of our solar system. Massive shock waves traveling through interstellar space that compress and heat the material in their path generate these tsunamis. The origins of these cosmic tsunamis are still not fully understood and researchers are still investigating their effects on the region. Voyager 1's most chilling revelation was the eerie silence of interstellar space. As the spacecraft exited the heliosphere, the region of space dominated by the sun's magnetic field, it unexpectedly entered a significantly quieter region. The absence of any detectable interstellar hum or buzz caused scientists to question whether the vacuum was the result of an instrumentation error or a characteristic of the region. In addition, the explorer captured the ribbon of energetic particles that appears to extend across the sky in the form of a giant bow or ribbon. It is believed that this ribbon is the consequence of the interaction between the magnetic fields of our galaxy and the interstellar medium, but its precise origin and properties are still the subject of intense research. But why would NASA cancel such a groundbreaking and historically significant mission? It is essential to realize that NASA has not canceled Voyager 1. Even after more than 44 years in orbit, the spacecraft is still transmitting information to Earth. However, as Voyager 1 continues its voyage, NASA has been forced to make difficult resource allocation decisions. NASA's decision-making process is heavily influenced by the spacecraft's restricted power supply. Voyager 1 is powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or RTG, which converts heat from the radioactive isotope's natural disintegration into electricity. As the RTG's power output decreases over time, the spacecraft's instruments must be turned off individually as the power source depletes. The Voyager 1 Cosmic Ray Subsystem or CRS heating system, which measures the intensity and distribution of cosmic radiation in space, was deactivated by NASA in 2020. This decision was made in an effort to conserve energy as the spacecraft continued its journey away from the Sun. NASA determined that the CRS's collected data were sufficient for scientific investigation after it had already outlived its expected lifespan by several years. NASA must also account for the limited bandwidth available for transmitting Voyager 1 data back to Earth. The spacecraft employs a 23-watt transmitter to transmit its data which is then received by NASA's deep space network antennas and radio arrays. In addition, a limited amount of data can be transmitted at any given moment due to the signal's degradation as it travels through the vastness of space. To maximize data transmission, NASA has created a priority list of Voyager 1's equipment indicating which data should be transmitted back to Earth first. This classification is determined by the significance of the study and the scientific value of the data. Data from Voyager 1's magnetometer instrument which analyzes magnetic fields in space are extremely significant because they can help explain how the solar wind and interstellar medium interact. Therefore, despite the fact that Voyager 1 has been kept operational, NASA has had to make difficult decisions regarding how to manage the spacecraft as it proceeds to explore the outer reaches of the solar system. In April 1978, when it was approximately 165 million miles or 265 million kilometers from Jupiter, it began its imaging mission. 
Jupiter's atmosphere appeared to be more turbulent in January 1979 images than it had been during the 1973 to 1974 Pioneer flybys. Voyager 1 began taking photographs on January 30, 1979 and continued to do so every 96 seconds for 100 hours. This produced a color time-lapse film depicting 10 revolutions of Jupiter. The spacecraft entered Jupiter's orbit on February 10, 1979 and on March 1, 1979, it discovered a thin, less than 30 kilometers or 19 miles thick ring surrounding the planet. Voyager 1 made its closest approach to Jupiter on March 5, 1979 at 12.05 Universal Time from a distance of approximately 174,000 miles or 280,000 kilometers. Amalthea was then one of the moons that Voyager 1 passed at a distance of 261,100 miles or 420,200 kilometers. Io was found to be one of the most geologically active planets in the solar system, if not the most. At least eight active volcanoes were spewing detritus into space, as depicted by images of the planet's bizarre yellow, orange, and brown globe. Active volcanoes lend credence to the theory that sulfur and oxygen in Jovian space are caused by sulfur dioxide-rich volcanic emissions from Io. Two additional moons, Thebe and Métis were discovered by the spacecraft. After its encounter with Jupiter on April 9, 1979, Voyager 1 made its first course correction in preparation for its rendezvous with Saturn. A second adjustment made on October 10, 1979 prevented the spacecraft from colliding with Saturn's moon Titan. In November 1979, it made its first flyby of the Saturn system, which was awe-inspiring. Voyager 1 discovered five new moons, a ring system with thousands of bands, wedge-shaped transient clouds of minute particles in the B-ring dubbed spokes, a new ring, the G-ring, and shepherding satellites on either side of the F-ring that keep the ring's sharp edges. During its approach to Saturn, the spacecraft captured images of Titan, Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, and Rhea. The incoming data indicated that the majority of the moons were composed of water ice. Titan was the target that Voyager 1 passed by at a distance of approximately 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers on November 12, 1979, at 541 Universal Time. Images revealed that a viscous atmosphere completely obscured the planet's surface. The probe discovered that about 90% of the moon's atmosphere is composed of nitrogen. At the planet's surface, the pressure was 1.6 atmospheres and the temperature was minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 180 degrees Celsius. What method does Voyager 1 use to transmit its message? Well Voyager 1 uses the Deep Space Network, a network of antennas located in California, Spain and Australia, to communicate with Earth. Voyager 1 and other interstellar probes emit feeble signals that the antennas are designed to pick up. The Voyager 1 communication system includes a transmitter, a high-gain antenna, and a low-gain antenna. A low-gain antenna is used for close-range communication, while a high-gain antenna is used for long-range communication. The data must be transmitted back to Earth via the transmitter. Voyager 1 must communicate with the DSN antennas in order to transmit data to Earth. The antennas must be accurately positioned and capable of receiving the weak signals Voyager 1 emits. After establishing contact, Voyager 1 employs a radio frequency signal to transmit data to Earth. In the X-band of the radio spectrum, at a frequency of 8.4 GHz, the signal is being broadcast. Pulse code modulation is the method used to digitally encrypt Voyager 1's transmitted data. PCM is a technique for digitally representing analog signals such as images and sounds by sampling the passwords at regular intervals and converting them to binary numbers. The information is then transmitted to Earth in tiny packets. The containers are transmitted using the Consultative Committee for Space Data Systems Protocol, a standard protocol used for communication in deep space. Comparatively to modern communication systems, the packets are transmitted at a rate of 160 bits per second, which is extremely slow. Due to the fact that Voyager 1 signal weakens as it approaches Earth, DSN antennas must be able to detect even the slightest of warnings. During reception by the DSN antennas, the data is processed and stored on Earth. Scientists then analyze the data and use it to further their understanding of the solar system. Unquestionably, the universe, both within and beyond our solar system, continues to amaze and inspire us. Alright everyone, this video ends here. Thanks for watching.
Remember to subscribe to our channel to receive the most recent space-related information. See you next time.